Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, wait, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoy this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Each and every one of you, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I'm known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to encourage one another and to talk over our concerns, empower one another, and of course, go to God's word for the answers. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I want to thank all of you who are watching me via my website, which is www.wisecourtship.com. Those who are watching me via Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, Twitter, um, YouTube, listening on the various podcasts on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and all over any place you can get a podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. And I know I missed some social media platform that we are probably on. And I just want to thank you guys so very, very much. So let me go into the chat box and say hello. Frazier is here um, watching us via Facebook and all the way from Scotland, if I'm not mistaken. Good to see you, Frazier, on today. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into this word. And I am going to be reading from 1 Timothy 3, uh, 1 through 13. 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. Now, dear ones, I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible, and then I'll probably, as I teach, I'll go to the uh, Eastern, uh, the English Standard Version, okay? So 1 Timothy 3, um, 1 through 13 reads, um, if anyone wants to provide leadership in the church, good, but there are pre preconditions. A leader must be well thought of, committed to his wife, cool and collected accessible and hospitable. He must know what he's talking about, not be over fond of wine, not pushy, but gentle, not thin skinned, not money hungry. He must handle his own affairs well, attentive to his own children and having their respect. For if someone is unable to handle his own affairs, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a new believer, lest the position go to his head and the devil trip him up. Outsiders must think well of him, or else the devil will figure out a way to lure him into his trap. The same goes for those who want to be servants in the church. Serious, not deceitful, not too free with the bottle, not in it for what they can get out of it. They must be reverent before the mystery of the faith, not using their position to try to run things. Let them prove themselves first. If they show they can do it, take them on. No exceptions are to be made for women. Same qualifications. Serious, dependable, not sharp tongue, not over fond of wine. Servants in the church are to be committed to their spouses, attentive to their own children, and diligent in looking after their own affairs. Those who do this servant work will come to be highly respected, a real credit to Jesus' faith. 
And I just read 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. I read it from the Message Bible. But as I teach, I mean, it's the same meaning. I'll probably be referring to the English Standard Version as I am teaching along. <clears throat> and so I want to talk today about God's vote for leadership. God's vote for leadership. Good to see you. Thank you so much, um, Frazier. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Says during this COVID time, there is definitely a moving of the Holy Spirit. And I agree with you 100%. So today we're going to talk about God's vote for leadership. And the scripture I read is a scripture that people tend to read when they are choosing a pastor, uh, when they're choosing deacons for the church, and even when women are leaders in the church as well. So, so if you got a question about women being leaders in the church, they gave directions on women too. Okay. <laughs> so that must mean it's okay for women to be leaders in the church. But uh, that's not what I'm talking about today. Nor am I talking about uh, your qualifications to be a pastor or a deacon or even a spiritual leader in the church. What I'm talking about is God's description of leadership. Because if it's good enough for the church, it's good enough for the world. Oh, y'all not going to help me on today. Y'all not going to help me on today. And especially, I think this message, um, usually when I speak a message, it's something that everybody can benefit from, whether you're a Christian or not. But this one may be leaning more on your maturity as a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, I think you can, you know, you can definitely get something from it. But you're going to have to ask God to reveal the truth to you okay because some things are hidden from you when you don't know God when you don't subscribe to what he is teaching you're blinded so you're gonna have to ask God to reveal it to you say open my eyes God that's all you got to say <laughs> open my eyes God and so what I'm finding is that Christians very often good to see you Tracy tr Christians very very often um, want to please God and that's great isn't it we should want to please God and sometimes we are so hooked up on the logistics of pleasing God like the legalities that you shouldn't drink you shouldn't smoke you shouldn't you know uh, you shouldn't chew you shouldn't run with those who do you know we get so hepped up on that that we don't really hear God's totality his heart he does not want to be legalistic but he does want you to embrace his commandments because you love him he knows that you're going to make mistakes that you're not going to be a perfect person but he has outlined things for you to make it easier for you to spot those who are on board with God it is a belief in the Christian faith that those who lead us, even if it's outside of the church, they have been appointed by God. And you are so right. Even what I do, I have been appointed. Even what you do, you have been appointed. And it is up to us, however, how we lead. God has given us qualifications on what makes a great leader and what he would like to see. But it is up to us to follow that or not. And you say, well, why would God give us directions? And then it's up to us to follow it because he has blessed us with what we call free will. You know, we talk a lot about that in this country, about having freedoms and that we can do what we want. And we do have freedoms, but there are definitely some things that you shouldn't do. You shouldn't murder somebody. You shouldn't push your freedoms on somebody else. You shouldn't terrorize other people. So your freedom, and I've taught on this before based off like my mother gave this scenario and it is definitely biblical is your freedom ends where minds begins in other words nobody's freedoms infringes upon anyone else how do we know we infringe because God has outlined it in his word and anything you want to know is in God's word already amen okay I hope y'all gonna help me on today if not y'all go ahead and share this because somebody needs to hear what I'm having to say on today but here in the world we tend to especially in the United States we claim to be a Christian country which means we should uh, subscribe to all that God is teaching you know I have a slogan that says are you subscribed to the wise courtship philosophy and that are people who those are people who follow what I teach that book is right back there I teach from that book which is basically biblical principles as well but it's about um finding someone who is right for you and so there are three steps that we have in that book that helps you to decide whether a person is really for you and whether they're real whether they're fake if they got problems proclivities 
all of that. And so people who are subscribed to the wise courtship philosophy have a belief that they, um, they want whole relationships in their romances, their families, their friendships, and their businesses. When you become a Christian, you subscribe to all of the teachings that are in the word. Doesn't mean you won't like everything that's in there, but it does mean that you subscribe to it. And what we know as Christians that anything we need answers to is in the Bible. And so what we find here in God's word is that he has a description of what a good leader will be. Do y'all want to hear what a good leader will be? I read some of that already in your hearing, but I want to bring out some things because we very often read this scripture when we're trying to choose pastors in the church, when we're trying to choose deacons, when we're trying to choose women as leaders, we often turn to this passage of scripture and use this description to, uh, to go by. But if we believe and know that God places people in leadership, all leaders, somebody say all, all leaders ought to um, measure up to this standard. Will you be perfect? No, you will not always be perfect. But there is when you, somebody said, when you become a, live, a leader, you got to sit high, you got to give eye high, you got to walk high. Okay. In other words, you got to be a cut above the rest. We believe this when we are in the corporate America. We believe, oh my gosh, that you got to be a cut above the rest. Good to see you, um, Mamo. Good to see you visiting me, Vera Periscope. Good to see you on today. We we subscribe, dear ones. We subscribe heavily and say you got to be a risk taker. You got to be powerful. This is what we say about people in corporate America or any leader. We're coming from First Timothy three one through thirteen. We um we really believe this when we when we we talk about leaders in the world that they ought to have a certain set of qualifications we even agree that they ought to rip people's head off and step on their mama and smack the cat in order to get up the corporate ladder but God says no this is what I want out of a good leader this is God's vote for leadership because this is what he wrote that he wants out of leaders and this is this, this is some of the things that he said okay he says um if anyone, if anyone aspires for the office of an overseer, he desires a noble task. So they're talking about here as a pastor, but anytime you want to lead people, that is noble. That's wonderful. But let's go into some of the qualifications. Says they must be above reproach. Okay, they can't be caught in all of this mess, all of these scandals, all of this hearsay, all this situation. People will say things about you, dear one, but you ought not be caught up in it. You ought not be guilty of what they're saying that you're doing. You ought to be the husband of one wife, okay? And when, later down, it gets down to the women too. So the women ought to have one husband, okay? Not all these men that they're dealing with. We ought to be sober minded. All right, have our mind together, not wishy washy, not silly, not saying silly things, not doing silly things. We ought to be super focused. It does not mean that we won't laugh sometimes and have a few jokes, but we ought to be serious about what we're doing. We need to be self control. We shouldn't be so thin skinned and one day we up and one day we down. We ought to be steady. Okay, we ought to have our emotions under check. Is anybody helping me on today? Because I know I'm talking good. I'm talking better than y'all sharing on today. <laughs> I'm talking better. Y'all need to share this. Y'all need to tweet this out. If you on Facebook or Twitter, tweet this out. Share with all your followers. Put it on Facebook. All those who are watching me on Facebook, you need to start a watch party on this. You need to um, bring individual people on this broadcast. You need to put it on your timeline because I'm talking good on today. And some people don't want to hear this, but listen, all of us are leaders in some way, whether we're leaders over our households, whether we're leaders at our jobs, whether we're leaders over the nation, whether we're leaders over the city, whether we're leaders in the community house, we are all leaders in something. And the Bible also says, looking at verse two of first Timothy three, it says that we, um, we should be sober minded, self-control, respectable, 
hospitable, able to teach. Listen, a lot of things that on the outside are important, but what happens, dear ones, many of us have got so concerned about what we, thank you for sharing, Lakeisha, good to see you on today. So many of us have been concerned about what we look like on the outside to other people. We've kept that part of the scripture or keep our reputation good, but we've thrown away the other part that we are really to be what we people think we see. Oh my gosh, we ought to be what people think we see. If they really think we're positive and we have a happy family and we like people, we ought to really be that. So it says be respectable, be hospitable. That means that you're not stingy with showing someone, you know, um, making them comfortable, bringing them into your home or or if you're having an event or an, uh, an affair that you ought to be a kind to people. Oh my gosh, people know when you like them. People know when you're just tolerating them. Y'all not going to help me on today. I wish somebody would, but that's okay. I'm going to keep on talking good because this is real good, (laughs) y'all. This is real good on today. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We ought to be what people think they see. If that's on a positive note, that's right. If it's on a positive, we ought to live up to it. In other words, it's not good enough to just show we a happy family. You ought to be a happy family. It's not enough to say that I'm respectable. You ought to be respectable. We, we're so into what the outside looks out like. What about looking at the inside? What is the inside? Um, what is that saying? Um, forget about what the outside is saying. We ought to be able to teach. We should have enough wisdom and enough experience that we are able to uh, to feed other people and, and, and give them wisdom and knowledge that's going to help them. We ought not be a drunkard. Hmm. That goes hand in hand with self-control. We ought not be a drunk. We ought not be under the influence of empty thing. When you are, when you have a leader that's under the influence of stuff that they, you cannot rely on their judgment. Y'all not going to help me on today because see what happens a lot of times we get so used to jacked up leaders. We get so used to this, 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 uh, uh, eating out of the garbage can. You know, uh, there was a picture called Ratatouille. It was a, a, like a, maybe a Disney type film and Ratatouille was a rat. And he, you would know rats eat out of garbage cans, but he felt like, and he later became a chef. He felt like he wanted quality food. He didn't want just empty thing. Okay. And that's how we ought to be. Sometimes you get so used to garbage. You don't know that there's anything better, but God in his word tells you there's a better way for leadership. Oh my gosh. Not be a drunkard, not violent, but gentle. We have, uh, we have, we have, um, we have, um, grabbed, grabbed hold of this idea that if you're in business, you ought to run over somebody's neck. You ought to smack their cat and tell your mother to get back. We, we, you know, we, we into stuff like that. Oh, they're a real good leader, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that you ought not be violent, but gentle not quarrelsome y'all open the word open the word open the word somebody say in the chat box open the word not quarrelsome not quarrelsome do you know what that means that means no arguments don't be starting fights and starting mess somebody need to share this honey before you start voting child (laughs) you better vote for a good leader oh my gosh oh help me holy ghost i feel something in here not a lover of money Somebody say that's in a word. It's nothing wrong with having money. It's not nothing wrong with working for money. But if you love money, you'll do anything for it. Not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well. With all dignity, keeping his children submissive. In other words, get them brats under control, please. That's the Tony's translation. And some of y'all want to tell everybody else what to do, but you can't even control your own children. You can't control your own house, your wife or your husband running amok. Okay. Okay. Yes, indeed. It's in the word. Open that word up and read it. And that's why people don't respect you. That's why they are not listening to you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I don't teach stuff that I don't do. Y'all know that, right? I try to be honest. Now, if you ask me what the truth is, whether I'm doing it right or not, I'm going to say, this is the truth, honey. And y'all pray that I get it together and I'll pray you get it together. All right. 
<laughs> but I'm telling you stuff that I do. And I tell you most passionately that if you don't have your household under control, hashtag sit down, hashtag have several seats. Okay. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't working with me today. Go ahead and share it. That's why I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person you're supposed to share it with. Listen, it says, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care for God's church? And listen, if you're not a pastor, but God has put you a leadership over your job, leadership in the community, how are you going to run that? How are you going to lead that? How are you going to manage that if you can't get your own household together? Oh, my goodness. Let me skip down to verse 7. It says, moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. You got to be well thought out, thought of because people will follow you more easily when they think well of you. When you get to the point where people can't stand you and it's a legitimate reason because people are going, you always have somebody that can't stand you. But when it's of a legitimate reason, it's hard to be influential. Oh, I'm trying to rush through this, but the Holy Ghost won't let me. Now I'm going to step back one verse when it says he must not be a recent convert or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. I still believe that with any leadership, you ought not be a recent convert. What is a recent convert? That's someone who recently comes to Christ. I don't think people who recently come to Christ ought to be a leader in anything. I think you ought to mature. It's just like making some food and you got to, you got to let it simmer a while while all the ingredients work it through. There's something to be said for time and experience. Somebody put time and experience in the chat box. When you don't have enough time and you don't have enough experience, you still making mistakes. We all make mistakes, but you making them dumb ones. Can I talk plain? I don't know if I can talk plain or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. We all make mistakes, but when you are immature and green, as my mother says, you're going to make them dumb mistakes. You're going to trip up over stuff that you should have learned long time ago. Oh my gosh. Let's look at the scripture further. It also goes into this scripture talking about deacons and it also talks about women. And what we find is just by reading this scripture that women are leaders too. Okay. And what we're finding out the deacons, even though they may not be a pastor, still has the same responsibility, still ought to measure up. So what is that saying in real life? Whether you are the head honcho or not, you still ought to serve with integrity. And yes, I did use the word serve because when you are a leader, you are a servant. I don't have time to go to that scripture. I don't have time to go to it, but you go find it for yourself. Go prove me wrong. Go dig in there. When you are a leader, you are a servant. And so it says deacons likewise, meaning just like, just like the overseers, you must be dignified, not double tongue. Okay. Hold yourself with some decorum and stop talking about so much stuff. You say one thing one day and you say something else the next day. Does anybody know anybody like that? You say one thing one day and the next day is something else. We can't rely on you. No, nobody want to follow anybody that's like that. It still talks about the wine here in scripture. You cannot be addicted to wine. You cannot be greedy for dishonest gain. I'm reading right out of the scripture. I'm not even really adding anything. It says you must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first. So you can't just step up into leadership without being tested, without being out there so we can see who you really are. I know we all like to slap people up there because they look cute to us. Or I like how they said that and I like how they walk. That's it. That's it right there. When you are a leader, you are a servant. Thank you, Momo. I know we like to put people up there because they wear their hair a certain way and, and, and they daddy was, was a leader and they mama was a leader. We like to do all of that stuff, but God has his own qualifications for leaders, whether you like the leader or not. But what you ought to be looking at is, is the leader exemplifying what God has laid out in his word? Not if the leader is going to do what you want them to do. 
even if it's a great thing, even if it's a wonderful thing you want them to do, it has nothing to do with it. You need to look at their qualifications. Why? Because if God cared enough for us to put it in his word, then it's worth looking at. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I wish y'all would share this broadcast because this is real good right here. Let me skip down to the women. Their wives likewise must be dignified nor slanderers. I wonder why we got slanderers under the women and the men didn't seem to get slanderers under there. Because you know, we can run our mouth, honey, and we can cut down a person quicker than anything else. Speaking against people's destiny, saying things against them that's going to really tear them down. We got to be careful of that. And if you're going to be a leader, you need to learn how to hush your mouth. Don't open it, then the, my mother, don't open your trap unless you're going to say something positive. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. But sober-minded, faithful in all things. Here's that sober-minded again. Oh my gosh. Let deacons each be with the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve as a deacon or leader or servant, gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. So when you vote for leadership, good to see you, darling, Lakeisha, thank you. When you vote for leadership, you ought to vote with those qualifications in mind. And very often when we do, when we vote, when we choose leaders, when we, when we um, demand these, there's so many scriptures I could have brought forward out of the Bible. Um, you know, there was a point in the Bible where, you know, Israel wanted a king. They wanted a leader instead of having God be their king. They wanted a leader. There was another instance when they decided they were going to choose somebody. They saw somebody who stood, you know, he was tall, dark, and handsome. And they, oh, yo, that's, that's him. That's it. That's him. And it has nothing to do with it. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so sometimes since we have a difficulty in doing that, God has laid out qualifications for a leader. So you don't have to be sitting there hemming and hawing. You don't have to sit there scratching your head. You don't have to sit there. I don't know what I'm going to do. And hey, you know, I got to pray on it. I got to go into the third eye. I got to go in transcendental meditation or whatever you call it. I got to, you know, fast for 40 days and 40 nights. You ain't got to do none of that. Somebody said, you don't have to do that. You just got to open up the word and read it. I am fascinated by people who don't know things that are in the word. Somebody say it's in there. Open it up and read it. I've read this one to you, the qualifications of a leader. And you know what's funny, what's funny, I believe, this is just my own personal belief, is that just like children, when they know, even when they're babies, they know when they're about to do something wrong. You know, how they get ready to go over there to the stereo and touch the stereo or the light socket and they turn around and they look at you. <laughs> Because they know they're about to do something wrong. We are the same way. We know when people are not doing wrong. But when we want this person or we want that person in our lives or we want things to happen a certain way, we kind of turn a blind eye. You know, we kind of wink, wink it off or shrug it off or act like it's not there. But beloves, beloves. We are so much more responsible than what happens in the world and in the earth because God has laid out a guideline. Somebody put a guideline in the chat box, a guideline. God has laid out a guideline to help us so that we won't get all stuck and we're sitting here scratching our head. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you know what you're going to do. I don't know. You don't know what you're going to do. All you got to do, honey, is read the word. Well, listen, we just got finished talking about God's vote for leadership. And I want you to apply what you have learned today. I want you to read that scripture and apply it every time you choose a leader, every time you step up to be a leader, every time some you have a friend or someone or someone that you can pull their coattail and, and help them to be accountable. Good to see you, um, Sharon. Good to see you on today. I want you to apply this scripture so that you will not be stumbling and bumbling when it comes time to identifying 
a good Christian and godly leader. And even if you're not a Christian, honey, you still got to step up. You know that, right? You still got to make an account on how you serve other people. You can't say, well, Lord, I wasn't a Christian. We, I know that. <laughs> I know that because that's why you about to get this punishment right here because you is not one. All right. You still have to make an account of how you treat people and how you serve people. Oh, my goodness. Well, dear ones, we're going to get ready to pray. And I um I, I, I ask that each one of you um put your prayer requests up when you see me put my glasses on. Put your prayer requests up and I'm going to pray for you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. God, we just salute you. We we just bow down to you knowing that you are such a good God. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. You are thoughtful God, thoughtful enough to leave us a guideline, God. When we're making decisions, when we're trying to see who is of you, who is the best to serve us in the area of a leadership. God, forgive us for the things that we have done wrong, said wrong. Forgive us for not reading your word. Forgive us for not um, not applying what you have given us. Um, forgive us for turning a blind eye when people who will not listen to you, when they will not obey you, God. Give us the strength to stand up and to be the light that you have called us to be in this very, very dark world. God, we just thank you for life. We thank you for health. Go ahead and tell God what you're thankful for in the chat box. God, we thank you for strength and keeping us safe and strong and healthy all through this pandemic. God, we thank you for being so good to us. God, you've just been so kind. You've been so loving. God, even some of us who have lost our job, you've kept us. You just kept us. You kept our families together. God, you kept our bodies together, our minds together. And we're so, so grateful. God, we just pray also for those who may be suffering at this time because they've lost a loved one, because they've lost their jobs, because they've lost their health, because maybe possibly they're in a, ho they're in a hospital a bed right now fighting for their lives. God, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are a healer and knowing that you are able. God, we pray for all those who are on this broadcast. We pray for the families that they represent, oh God. We pray them, we pray, oh God, that you will bless their families, that you will, that, that the blood of the lamb will be over their doorpost, oh God, as this plague, the coronavirus virus passes over. God, we pray um, for those who have lost their jobs, oh God. We pray that you will open up a door for them in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for those who may be scared, who may be uneasy, who may be stressed out. God, give them peace. And you said you would give us perfect peace if our mind would stay on you. So God, shift our minds to you, God. Shift our minds to your word. Shift our minds to your song. Shift our minds to the people of God who will empower us and who will um, pour into us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. God, I pray for Mike. Uh, Maldo in the name of Jesus God his ministry the what he may be going through at this time oh God God you cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet you know what he stands in the need of God in the name of Jesus touch him right now oh God God I still pray for the Smith family uh, in their bereavement the Coleman found family all those families who lost loved ones to this virus God over 200,000 people God, touch right now. God, we need you. We need you like never before. God, we just stretch out before you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, taking every concern, every concern of your people, oh God. We lay them before you. God, we ask you to forgive us so you can hear this prayer. God, we know that we are not worthy in of ourselves, but because of the blood of Jesus, God, we can come before you. So we ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you heal, you set free, and you deliver. God, we pray an extra prayer over the United States of America, oh God, over our president, over all of our leaders, oh God, that they will change their hearts and that they will follow you, oh God, in spirit and in truth. 
oh God, that they will be insatiable readers of the word of God and that they will not be just readers or hearers, uh, but they will also be doers, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for every unsaved person on planet earth, oh God, that they will be exposed to the word, that they will receive this word, oh God, and not only receive it, but they will believe it. Not only believe it, but they will do it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for every family. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up if you have it. God, we pray for every family that's represent here, every church that they represent, every man and woman of God who um, imparts your word, oh God. Bless them right now. Stir up the gifts that are within them. Encourage them even as we go through this um, pandemic, oh God. They, they may be worried about their congregation and laying before you about situations, wondering if the church will open again, wondering if the people will come back in. But God, empower them now. Give them witty ideas and inventions. Pour in all types of ideas to your man, men and women of God of how to spread God's word. Empower them now, oh God. God, that whatever their hands touch will prosper so that they will be able to share this word so that they will be able to give to the things that need to be given to so that people will be able to uh to spiritually be fed as well as um uh, physically be fed oh god in the name of jesus we pray we pray for every mother every father every child oh god in the name of jesus every person under the sound of my voice and every last person who comes onto the replay and for anyone hallelujah that had a prayer request that was too embarrassing to share in this timeline possibly too private to share with anyone Hallelujah, God, you know all about it. You said in your word, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. So God, we telling you all about it because you won't tell anyone. We're asking for forgiveness because you said that if we confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we continue to pray for the salvation of your people because without you, Without you, God, we will never be able to make it. We love you, God. We pray now, too, for the Robinson and Carr and Hunter family, God. Touch them, God. You know what's going on with them. Touch them, oh God. Cover them, oh God. Bring them together, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for the McCor McCorkle family in the name of Jesus, God. Touch them. Hallelujah. You know all about it. You know all about it. Touch them now, even now. God, touch them, increase them, empower them, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And whatever answer, whatever answer you give us, whether it be yes, whether it be no, or whether it be wait a minute, we know it's going to be better. Somebody say better. It's going to be better than what we've ever expected. And we thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Yes, we pray for all those that's in bereavement from COVID, from cancer, from sickle cell, all those. Listen, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And although, 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 you know, many of us want to be here, many of us want to stay with family and friends. I get that. You know, we want to live a little longer. We want to see Jesus, but we don't want to see him right now. <laughs> I get that. But we have to know, you got to know this, that it's so much better on the other side. It's so much better with Jesus than it is here. And so listen, we want to get a little bit of heaven while we're here, and then we want to die and definitely go to heaven, okay? <laughs> so if you miss a little bit of heaven here, then you're going to get some heaven over there. But you can get a little bit of heaven here. You can definitely get it here if you apply God's word. Listen, we talked today about God's vote for leadership. We look in his word, 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13, as God lays out the qualifications for a good leader. And we ought not go into life acting like we don't know what good leadership is. We ought to be teaching what good leadership is. We ought to be showing the world what good leadership is. We ought to say, listen, this is the standard. 
And if you're not going to live up to the standard, we're going to move to somebody else. We, we can't be afraid to have that in the church. We can't be afraid to have that in the community. We can't be afraid to have that in our world because this is what God said. And we all have to live up to it. I don't care if you're just home raising your babies. That is one of the most important jobs. And some people wait until they get 50, 60, 70 years old and realize that they didn't take that job as seriously as they should have. They look back and they realize I had the power. God gave me the anointing and the power to lead this family, to, to um, pour into this family. But listen, if you miss that, you got a chance to get it right because all around you, somebody say all around you, all around you is opportunities to be a light, to be a leader, to shine love on all corners of this world, all corners of this earth. And you can do it because you have God's power in you. Now, if just in case you're listening to me and you say, I don't know if I got God's power. I don't know if I know God. I don't know if I know Jesus. Listen, all you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart. You just got to confess, confess your sins because we all have done things wrong. Say, you know, I have done things wrong. And Jesus died for the things that you have done wrong so that you can come boldly to God's throne and talk to him and ask him and confess things all you want. So you've got to confess out of your mouth your sins, but also that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is the son of God. And not only say it with your mouth, you need to believe it in your heart. It's got to be real. And the Bible says you will be saved. So if you believe that and you said that out loud, listen, you saved. <laughs> and so you've got a little light that you can allow to shine all around you. If you don't shine now, I don't know when you're going to shine. If you don't stand up for the right leadership now, I don't know when you're going to stand. If you don't, if you don't say something for Jesus now, I don't know when you're going to say it. This is the time to say it. This is the time to do it. My vote is for God's vote for leadership. What about you? And speaking of vote, listen, exercise your right to vote. God has blessed you with it. Any opportunity you have, God has given you that opportunity. Don't you waste it. There was a parable in the Bible about how God gave each person a talent. And one of them hid their talent because they felt like it wasn't worthy. It wasn't wasn't anything maybe they measured it <coughs> excuse me against somebody else maybe they were sad because it was only one I don't know but they thought it was not worthy and they buried it that's a slap in God's face because anything God gives you is worthy is worth it and he's giving you the right to vote some of your people died for it they bled for it yes and it's a tragic thing some people can't even vote now even in this world some people are being suppressed from their vote but most importantly, God gave you the opportunity to vote. In this time, in this season, in this space, it's an opportunity to let your light shine. It's an opportunity to vote God's vote for leadership. Well, dear ones, I gotta go. But I can be visited on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayors. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video.